Hello everyone, this week we're going to be working on a video resume. The goal of this assignment is to get you acclimated to some professional video production techniques. And they're pretty simple and will help you to put together a really cool resume. So let's get started. And for this one, I'm going to assume you're probably going to be using your smartphone, but you can use any camera you want. But we'll get into that in just a minute. What I want you to do is think about a video resume where you're trying to show that you've got some credibility in your area. You already do because you're studying whether it's visual, video, PR, uh, one of the different areas that we're studying and trying to do content for in our class. So first thing you want to think about is what do you know about your persona? And we've been doing some serious study on that. So you know pretty good amount about your persona. But what do you want them to know about you? Think about this. If you are searching out for the information you're provided, providing, uh, what kind of information would you want to know about the people providing it? What kind of background would you like to know that would add and help for your credibility? What information will help them better connect with you? And is there information that will definitely add to your credibility? Courses you've taken, things that you've done, anything like that could help build your credibility. So let's start planning your story. So you need to think about what visuals, photos, or videos do you have that will enhance your story? Do you have a video of you doing something, visuals of you creating things? What do you have out there that can tell your backstory? And then what you want to do is gather those together. Now, for most of you, then they're probably going to be already on your phones, uh, someplace like that. Uh, for me, when I'm looking for some background stuff, some of those are actually real photos and I have to get them into a digital format. But you should have a lot collected already. So what you want to do is make an outline of the main points you want to include, but be thinking about your visuals because you are going to be on camera, but it, we don't want it to just be you on camera the whole time. We want to have some visuals. Now, just in case you might need to pull out some visuals from photos, there are some tools out there. I use this one. It's called PhotoMind. This one is a paid app, and it will scan photos and colorize them. You probably don't need that one. If you do, it's out there. There's a freebie one from uh, Google Photos called PhotoScan. Again, if you have actual photos and you need to turn them into digital photos, here's a couple of options for you. Of course, you can shoot photos of photos, but these do a better job of making them look better without all the glare you get from shooting photos of photos. All right, I'm going to assume that you've got some photos in mind, maybe some videos, some things that you want to share about yourself. So we're going to use a basic two-column script. This is pretty standard in video. And everything on the left is what you are going to say, what you're going to read to camera. And everything on the right is what we're going to see while what's being said on the left is being read. So you want to put it together in that direction. So it just makes it easy. You're already editing now. You know exactly what you're going to say and what people are going to see. So here's one that I made, and I'll show you the finished product at the end. So over on the left is what I read, and over on the right, when I edit this together, I know what visuals, photos, and video that I'm going to put into it. You notice the first part talks about video as a, as a hobby, and there's a picture. On the next one, you see I'm going to be me on camera. So every time it's just going to be me on camera, I put on camera, and every time that I'm speaking but you're going to see some sort of video or photo, then I put that there on the, on the right-hand side. Okay, so you want to put that together, and you've got a pretty good idea now of exactly what you're going to do. You should see a pretty good idea of how long it's going to be, although there's no real requirement for this one. Just remember not to make it so long that you're putting us to sleep. Now, there are some things you might want to consider uh, if you're collecting photos from someplace. Most of us, if you've got an iPhone, you're going to airdrop them or something like that, but you may also store them on a Google Drive, a box, or where you can get them back and forth. Anyway, you want to make sure you've got the photos on your device, whether it's your phone, an iPad, or a laptop, whatever it is you're using to edit, so you have access to them. There are tons of video editors out there. Uh, there's a couple that I prefer. When I'm doing a more professional style on my laptop, I use DaVinci Resolve. But for a lot of things, like for social media, I use InShot. You can use whatever video editor you want. And just make sure it lets you do multiple level, levels of video. So you can put you talking, and then we'll see video or photos on top of that. So for this uh, tutorial, I'm going to go through and, and show you using InShot, the basic principles. But you can use any video editor that you want. So I like InShot because it's available on Google Play and Apple. So any platform it's available on. It does not does not work on a laptop. It's only for uh, phones and iPads and such. So you will need some sort of a camera. Now, if you want to use your DSLR, you're certainly welcome to do that. Uh, you probably already know the workflow. Uh, for a lot of you, uh, using your iPhone or your smartphone is going to be the best bet. So get one of those out. 
Now, I use an iPhone, and I don't have a Samsung or other, so I can't tell you the exact setting, but all cameras, all phones are going to have some similar settings. You just have to go and find them. So under the iPhone, this is from my 13 Pro. So you go to camera, and then under that setting, you're going to see some different qualities and sizes. We want to shoot in HD 1080. I prefer 60 frames per second, but you can shoot at 30 frames per second if you want. You just don't want to go to 720. You don't need to go to 4K. You can if you want. The only problem with that is it starts to get bigger file size. Uh, that's totally up to you. But for the internet, for web, 1080p is usually proficient. And so you can see the formats. Again, for me, I, sh I prefer 1080p at 60 frames. It's just a personal preference. Uh, you're probably not going to be recording in slow-mo, so you don't have to worry about that. <coughs> Excuse me. And there's some other settings there you can look at, stereo sound, other things. I like to put the grid on so I can see for the rule of thirds, but again, that's totally up to you. Just make sure the settings are set to a high, a high enough quality that's going to look good. The other big thing is you're going to want to have stability. You don't want to be holding your camera out in front of you with your arms extended and talking to yourself. So typically some little type of tripod. Now you don't even have to have one. You can put your phone on something that's level and stable if you want to. Just make sure it's not bouncing around and it looks good. We don't like to see bouncy video or your head half cut off, that kind of thing. So I've got some examples here. Again, don't go out and buy anything unless, of course, you're, it's in your budget. But just make sure the camera's steady. For the video I shot for this example, I used one of these little tripods, and they're you know, all over the place, but uh, it holds your phone in there nice and easy, and keeps it level and steady, and all that kind of stuff. Now, lighting's a big deal. When you're shooting video of yourself, you want to make sure that you're lighted properly. When you think about it, most light comes from above, so we definitely want to be lighted from above. However, most uh, ceiling lights or classroom lights aren't very flattering, and they give us kind of some shadows under our eyes. So if you can, have some light that comes from above, about a 45-degree angle, not straight into your eyes, but li lighted from above, and slightly to the side to give you just a slight shadow. Now, you can also use a selfie ring if you want to get that glamour look as well. But just make sure you're lighted well so you don't have big black bags under your eyes. Uh, you definitely do want to see your eyes, or you're not so shadowed and the other thing you want to watch out for is that you don't have a really bright background so we can't see you and all we see is you know darkness so I shot this I was actually in a hotel when I put this together so I used that lamp there on my left as my key light and then this was a well-lighted room and it had little sconces in the back so it sets me off you see how it sets me off from the background so I don't blend into it and I also used uh, the cinematic mode on here as well so you can kind of see the lighting looks decent now this was late at night so I probably should have shaved before I did this but I didn't so forgive me so in iPhones are cinematic mode and there's similar things in other cameras simply what that does is give you a shallow depth of field or blurs out the background a couple things you definitely want to check your camera is always looking to focus on something so if you don't lock it in then it might meander around trying to focus in you kind of get this waffling back and forth effect as it loses focus so once you get the camera set lock in your focus and then don't move dramatically if you move back two feet you're going to be out of focus but if you move slightly it should be fine so definitely lock that in so you are in focus and the camera is not going to go out of focus now there's some tools you can use. For the most part, if you don't have a noisy room and you're only a couple feet away from your phone or your camera, then your audio is going to be okay. It's going to be fine. Uh, there might be you know some quality issues, but nothing really to worry about. If you want to worry more about it, then like I purchased some simple uh, microphones, a lavalier that works on Bluetooth that uh, works great, and then this video mic. Again, they you know cost. You need, I don't want you to go out and buy anything, but just so you know, there are some better ways to get audio than straight from your phone because it does start to get lose quality the further you are, you are away from your phone. Okay, so this is the setup I did. You don't have to do this, but I want you to read your script and not, you know, uh, just, um, you know, go off your cuff. So you're reading your actual script. Now, if you want to make it like a teleprompter, there's actually some tools out there like CapCut actually has a built-in teleprompter into their tool. The problem with most of those, if you're using your phone, is that where the camera is and where you're reading is slightly off. So I set up this way, and it wasn't perfect because I would have liked to have the camera up just a little bit higher, but I set up the camera on a little tripod, and right behind it, just in a Word document, is my script. 
And so with my mouse, I'm just scrolling and trying to keep the script just barely above the phone. So I'm looking right over the top of the camera. And then I read my script. And you might want to practice it a few times so it sounds good, make it conversational. But then actually, it looks like you're looking at people. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. You know, and a teleprompter actually has the camera behind a mirror, so you're looking right into the lens. But as long as you're not too close to the camera, it's going to be OK. So you want to put a little distance between the camera and you. And then your eyes aren't darting back and forth and it looks pretty decent okay for me i actually wanted to use my front camera instead of the back one the front cameras typically are better quality than the one that's facing you when you do selfies it's not critical but it's just a better looking camera it's usually a higher quality so because i have a smart um, uh, apple watch i could actually start recording when i can't see what's going on behind me but i can see the framing in my phone and uh, make sure that it looks good again you don't have to do that but this is what i wanted to try to do to make it look as good as i can and then hit record Okay, once I recorded it, then it's going to go into my camera roll. Now let's go into the editing. So again, you can use any tool you want, but I used InShot. So if you're using any app on your phone, then go ahead and open it up. It's going to give you access to your camera roll typically. And what you're going to do is pick the interview, not the interview, but the video that you shot of yourself talking to camera. And you want to put that in. And then uh, typically a lot of the apps, if you can pick all the videos you want, it drops them into a timeline. I don't like to do that because it makes it kind of a mess for me. So I like to put in, number one, the video of me talking and drop it in. And there's the tools and I put a tutorial from someone else on how to use InShot. And again, it's the same basic principles for all of them. But you go ahead and push play, make sure it looks good, scroll it back and forth, and then you can trim it up and uh, use uh, the trim tools and all that kind of stuff. I like to trim up my me on camera to exactly what I want it to look like. So I trim off the beginning, trim off the end. And then I click on the picture in picture. And again, most tools are going to have something similar. It might be called something different. When you click on it, it lets you go back to your camera roll and pick photos or video that you want to put into your story. And you can stack those on top of you speaking. So now it's just not you talking the whole time. So in here, I've got a picture of me. We're doing a video shoot uh, for an author. And so I drop that on top of me talking. And of course, you move the handles back and forth so you can lengthen or shorten the clip. If it's video, make sure that you don't drown out your voice by the audio that's on the video clip. So you might want to turn down the volume on this one. This was a photo. But if it's a picture, then, uh, or sorry, if it's a video, then it probably has audio with it. And you want to make sure it's not drowning out what you have to say. Okay, you want to put text. This is a required. So you're going to want to put text in your resume video. For this one, I just put what's called a lower third. It's just got my name. Uh, you can put whatever fonts you want that you think will work, but go ahead and put those in there. And again, most apps are going to have some sort of text. Some are more fancy than others, but go ahead and put that in there. And most of you just press and hold to put it where you want. And then export it. Now, when you go to export, typically it'll ask you for some settings and where you want to save it. Again, if it's on your phone, typically it will save it to your camera roll. But before you save it, make sure you play through the whole video and make sure it looks and sounds good. Sometimes we, we mess up. On this video I made, I left some uh, clips somewhere they shouldn't be, and so I had to go back and fix it, even though I thought it was done correctly. Okay, go ahead and export it. Now, when you save it, I'm just going to re recommend you save it at 1080p. Uh, you, if you want to do 4K, you can. It just gets a lot bigger. And for this particular exercise, it's probably not going to make it look that much better because we're watching it on the web at a small size. So you choose, but save it. Usually it saves you to your camera roll, and then you have access to it there. Okay, so here's the finished bio. I'll go ahead and uh, play that for you. You can watch that through. Video is a hobby, a passion, and a career for me. I'm Brian Howard. I teach video journalism and digital and social media at BYU-Idaho. My first professional job was as a TV reporter and anchor at KPVI in Pocatello, Idaho. I covered news and sports. I later worked at the Missionary Training Center creating language training videos, and then at KBYU producing live programming and interstitials. I've been at BYU-Idaho since 1999. For the past 17 years, I've hosted and produced Latter-day Profiles, which airs on BYU television. It's an interview program featuring noteworthy members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I have a side business called Shoebox Story. I do long-form journalism for news outlets in southeast Idaho and to keep up on my video skills. I got to be a producer and the voiceover artist for the documentary Mormon Scientist. That's the 
story of Elder Irene's father, who was a world-renowned scientist. I produced, shot, and edited Idaho's Anchorman, a documentary about an LDS news anchor that placed third in the documentary division at the LDS Film Festival in 2020. Shooting and editing video used to be very expensive and required lots of training. Tools like smartphones and video apps have put basic video editing within everyone's reach. With a little help, anyone can create quality videos to share their story. Okay, so now you saw how that was done. So let me talk specifically to this assignment. So again, it's a project to learn the basics of video production and to do it in a quick and efficient way. So you're going to use any video camera you want. You choose any tool you want, but you just need to tell me what those work so I want to know what you use. So this is what you're going to need to have. Definitely, like we talked about, review your background and experience as it relates to your topic and persona, and then put together your two-column script, plan what you're going to say based on the visuals that you have, then record your script with you on camera. And I've given you some tips how to make it like a teleprompter if you want to, but definitely don't do it off the cuff if you want to read directly from your script. Once you get that recorded, then go ahead and use whatever video editor you're going to use. Put your B-roll together as outlined in your two column script and put it all together. A couple of requirements. You do need to have some music. It doesn't have to be there the whole time, but music and text. Again, most apps provide music that are completely free for you to use. That's why they're part of it. And then, uh, but if you don't, make sure you have the rights to whatever music that is. Export at HD quality. And then what I'm going to have you do is post your video to your Substack site in a post, uh, just like you did for your tips and tools. Go ahead and post it there and then submit the link to that Substack post in Canvas. Also, if this is in a, a, a format for a discussion board, so go and attach your two column script in Word or other compatible format and make sure that your video and your script are both attached to your post. I put them in a discussion board format so we can easily access and see each other's uh, resume videos. The other thing I'd have you include in the post is just tell me what camera you used. Was it an iPhone, a Canon, a whatever, some sort of smartphone, and whatever software you used, just so we know what people used so we have a good idea on what you're doing. Okay, that's it. That's the assignment for putting together your video resume. I look forward to seeing your videos.